on his own volition, me not forcing or playing in his mouth and all this, just self-balance. And the same thing will be in the canter. His canter in a couple weeks should be like that. Self-balance. And I'm not fiddling and stuff. But again, you know, when they need your you to balance them up, you have to be there. But like I said last podcast, not there. <laughs> Meaning you're not yanking on them. You're just putting your seat leg and hand where it can help balance their haunches like Bill Steinkraus said you get their haunches engaged and working from behind the front end comes and this is what I mean by the front end comes I've seen people go for years fiddling with their mouth fiddling with their mouth and they get nowhere this is uh, 40 days not fiddling with the mouth. <laughs> Just fiddling with the haunches. <laughs> and long reigning. It does help a thoroughbred to get off their back. By getting off their back, and uh, I've used the long reigning for years now. Um, basically, it started years ago with lunging side reins, cabison, and all that stuff. And that was when I was a teenager, and then I met a wonderful cavalry officer, Major Raythi, Anton Raythi. And he taught me about long reigning. And then I uh, was around uh, Carl Mikolka, who was um, with the school in Austria, and even learned a little bit more about that the many things you can do with long reins and then of course he had uh, the Hoite Cole which are the movements above ground but anyway over the years uh, breaking yearlings two year olds and uh, sport horses generally speaking are a lot uh, more three year olds than that but whatever the circumstances and, un- and re-breaking horses horses that uh, were not turning well for for their trainer and um, racehorses they couldn't get onto the track rolled off for whatever reasons. I came over the last 22 years to realize uh, I was getting a lot more done off their back than on their back. Um, like uh, many athletes, you know, you're going to put out more when you feel good. And with um, over the years taking all the stuff off for Thurbit specifically uh, who are really good at uh, breaking at the pole with side reins on or um, you know doing athletic little things with their body so that it's not true in the sense from the hind leg all the way through up through the pole to the bit to the hand and long reigning gave a huge advantage of that. Um, and it gives also the horse, when you're warming it up, you're getting as well as the barometer of, for instance, uh, tomorrow when I get this horse out, I'll put him on the long reins and I'll get pretty much everything about today, how he warms up, how stiff is he on either side from what we did today without any weight on his back and he's in because he's giving of himself uh, for the exception of keeping his haunches square that's all I'm going to do tomorrow when I warm him up you're fluffing all those muscles and warming them up and stretching and everything without this horse relating it to the saddle the ride or uh, in the job most importantly the job thoroughbreds more than other breeds generally speaking um, relate everything to their job (laughs) so when you minus the rider in the jumping uh, and uh, putting them into uh, an upper level frame for the first time 
or going towards the upper levels in dressage, when you take it away from being rider, whether uh, it was a mistake on the rider's part or the horse just not comfortable enough with it, when you take the, that away, they are not going to relate it to you and where you're going. When you can keep it out there, so to speak, unrelated to to your ultimate task at hand, whether it be racing, jumping, dressage, or just uh, uh, hacking on a trail, it, it really makes a huge difference with the thoroughbred. Uh, being bred for athleticism, stamina, uh, mind over matter, um, they are a breed apart. They are not a warm blood. They are not a quarter horse. And as well as that, as you see, as he broke down into the trot there and I leaned back behind the vertical, I another real big uh, key to the thoroughbred breed specifically is to make their mistakes, whether it be uh, doing uh, a bigger try in a horse. In this case, he's, I'm, I'm really trying to get him demonstrative over ground and cantering, flowing, and getting his own self-balance. And he's a little bit uh, weak behind, so he broke down in the trot. Make it into an exercise, and there are no mistakes. Don't go to... Uh, a place, well, I would say uh, bossing them around. I meant canter. Just make it into an exercise. And and then follow it up with the demand when, they're, when they understand it. Don't make a mistake into an argument. And now I'm following it up by saying, okay, we have a mistake behind and we're going to come through into the right canter. So even though he did two or three steps in the cross canter, I, I opened it and kept him breath over the ground and reaching from behind. And they fix themselves when you keep those haunches square. They'll fix themselves. So now here we are canter cantering, but he's still happy. So we did like three or four mistakes if you back this film up. But I never approached it as a mistake. I approached it as a learning, balancing and gaining uh, more of an exercise for his muscles. But mentally, uh, he doesn't look at it as a mistake. Again, and I said this earlier, horses don't sit down with an equitation book and they don't say, oh, I'm supposed to do this now and when she says this or he says this, I'm supposed to do that. They're a living, breathing, uh, and at this point, in this horse's stage of life, he doesn't even know about, you know, stadium jumping or a dressage test and stuff like that. So if you put a rebuilding block up, uh, for instance, if a horse, you get on them, a young horse, and you ask for the right canter and they take, take off in the left canter and, and you're still warming them up, don't look at it as, oh, this horse uh, made a decision to uh, not want to do what I wanted to. Leave the ego at home. Um, take the left canter, proceed, go forward, and do a counter canter. Believe me, they will more than want to please you at this stage in the game, especially, and, and want to give you that right canter next time. And it never turns into an argument. You're always having your horse coming towards you rather than pushing them away with, demands, especially at this uh, early part of his career as a sport horse. Again, um, it, bringing him out to this big field and giving him this breadth uh, of, you know, acreage, so to speak, so uh, he, can, he can feel mentally and physically uh, free. I try to do a lot of passive riding. 